Hello and welcome to my walkthrough of a Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 revised character sheet. This guide is for anyone new to the game and can't figure out where to get started playing. I'll be using my 3.5 Player's Handbook to help fill out most of the sheet. You can find this and the Dungeon Master's Guide online or in some bookstores. Feel free, however, to use any edition you want. What I more importantly want to teach you is how these rulebooks work and what to look for. For my example, I'll be making Bodan, the half-orc barbarian. I've already filled in the names, so next we want first level barbarian and half-orc. Don't worry about ECL. It stands for effective character level, and it's used when playing as weird races. Now for size. All the races are medium except for halflings. This is mainly referenced when fighting different sized monsters that are too small to hit or really big and easy to hit. Also, Bodan is a boy. Next is alignment. These dictate what attitude you have when you roleplay. A good player will always ask themselves, would my character do that? Or how can I make this more evil before taking their turn? I made Bodan chaotic good, so he can do whatever he wants, as long as it's good. Now for religion, height, and weight. Religion is another choice that you make that just has to fit in with your character's backstory. But I lumped it in with height and weight because they follow on the next page in the character's handbook. Height and weight are called your vitals. Still to this day, my friends and I don't roll for them because they don't come up that often in casual play. We just fill in what would make sense. However, there are rules for rolling up your vitals that are pretty easy to follow if you want to be pure. How you fill in looks is totally up to you, so we'll just say... Good. Now you get to calculate your ability scores, so go grab four six-sided dice and roll them, and always remember to take out the lowest. Do this six times, write them down, and assign them where you want them, but remember to think about your class's needs. Bodan's a barbarian and needs strength and constitution, while a wizard would need more of intellect and willpower. The illegible text next to your ability totals are for the racial, enchantment, and miscellaneous modifiers. As a half-orc, Bodan gets a plus 2 to strength and a minus 2 to his intellect. You can find these modifiers for other races on a nifty chart on page 12. Enchantments and miscellaneous modifiers are exactly what they say. If you had an enchanted item that gives you plus 1 to a stat, write plus 1 on the line. Poison of minus 1 to dexterity? That's a minus 1 to dexterity. And so on. When you start, you most likely won't have anything to put there, so the math is easy. 18 plus 2 is 20, and 6 minus 2 is 4. I erase my old totals and I put my new ones in. In the last box, you put your modifier. This comes from a chart early in the handbook. Basically, subtract 10 from your total and divide it by 2. That's your modifier. Bodan has a great plus 5 to strength, but he's dumb as hell with minus 3 intellect. Repeat this for all your stats and calculate all your modifiers. Those are the important numbers. Next up is combat options. Your base attack bonus is what you add to your d20 roll to try and hit a target. There's a chart for every class within the book that lists what stats and abilities you gain each level. We'll be coming back to this later, so all you need to know right now is the base attack bonus. Write it down and choose a weapon. There's an example starting kit for each class. I know it says half orc, but you can use it for any other race you want. Your base attack bonus with different weapons changes. For melee weapons like the Great Axe, you add your base attack bonus plus your strength modifier. The extra one is for a feat that I'll explain later. This gives us a total of 7, so our attack bonus with the basic swing of a battle axe is 1d20 plus 7. Once you hit, you roll damage. Every weapon will tell you its damage depending on your character's size. Then, you add 1.5 times your strength modifier for two-handed weapons, one time for main hand weapons, and half for offhand weapons. This does not apply to dexterity weapons such as bows. If you roll a natural 20 when rolling to hit, you crit. Some weapons allow for a range of rolls to be a critical. When you roll a 20, your attack will hit, but you must roll again and land to hit again to apply your weapon's multiplier. All your other weapons can go here too, but remember it takes a round to put away your weapon and pull out a new one. In the middle it asks for our speed. This is found in the traits section of your race instead of your class. Our base land speed is 30 feet, which translates to 6 5-foot tiles. This is mostly used for combat. Your initiative modifier is equal to your dexterity bonus. You add it to your d20 roll when determining combat order. Grappling is something we're going to skip. You can easily fill in the numbers and find your total, but the actual process of grappling in-game is a huge pain, so don't worry about it for now. 
Saving throws are for situations like avoiding pitfalls and resisting mind control. Each class's base modifier is listed in their chart and increases as they level. Additionally, you apply the corresponding ability modifier written under each type of save. Magic, miscellaneous, and temporary are filled when needed, the same as your ability scores. The conditional modifiers box is where you write reminders for certain conditions that would affect your saving rolls. For example, a feat might give you a plus two reflex roll when it involves traps. So you would write plus two reflex with traps. Now just add up the totals. Those are what you apply to your d20 roll when making a saving throw. For the armor class, I want to skip ahead to your actual armor. I took this studded leather from the starting package that we took our weapons from. It gives us a plus three to our armor class, which will add up soon. But it also limits our dexterity modifier to plus five. So while wearing this armor, my dexterity bonus cannot exceed 5. It also has an armor check penalty of minus 1, which interferes with your skills that we'll get into later. Back up to our armor class, it wants our dex bonus and a bonus from our armor. Both of them are 3 in this case. And that's all you need to worry about for now. Natural and deflective armors are uncommon in early levels. However, the size modifier will come up somewhat often. It makes hitting larger enemies easier and hitting smaller enemies harder. There's a small chart that lists the bonuses. I'll just leave it here since it changes with different size matchups and is something you'll have to keep checking. As a medium character, I don't get any bonuses because of my size, making my total 16. If I were a halfling, however, it would be 17 because I'm one tier smaller. Touch and flat footed are really simple. Touch is your armor class when your armor is useless, so just subtract your armor bonus. Flat-footed is when you can't dodge or move, so your dexterity bonus is subtracted, leaving the blocking up to your armor. Finally, for this page is your hit points. First, you need to know your hit die. You can find it in your classes section of the handbook. Your initial hit points are equal to the maximum of your hit die, plus a roll of your hit die, plus your constitution modifier. Every level after this, you add a roll of your hit die plus your constitution modifier to your max hit points. The next page I want to look at is the skills page. Skill checks are d20 rolls that decide whether or not you fail at putting your skills into action any way you can think of. Try to choose skills that would fit your character's backstory and match their personality. The first thing to do is look up your class's skills section. There's a list of skills there that you need to check off on your sheet. These are class skills that trade evenly one skill point for one rank. Anything you don't mark, however, is called cross-class and requires two skill points to ascend one rank. You don't round up and you can't save skill points for later. Back in your class's skills section, you can calculate how many skill points you have to spend and how many you gain each level. The max amount of ranks you can have in a single skill is equal to your level plus three. Unless it's a cross-class skill, then it's your level plus three divided by two. Once the skill points are assigned, Include every skill's corresponding ability modifier to their section. Then you have your totals. Note the black diamonds next to some skills. These indicate that you must spend at least one rank worth of points in this skill to use it. They're a little harder to see, but some skills have asterisks. This means that you apply your armor's armor check penalty when rolling for these skills. Racial traits and class features are easily found listed in the handbook. Every level, you gain a class-specific ability. Each of them are explained in the class features section. And you've already seen where racial traits come from. Just keep track of them on your sheet and reference the book when you need to know what they do. Feats are very similar, except you're allowed to pick your own, although some feats require you to have already learned another feat to be able to choose them. The handbook lists them all alphabetically and goes into detail about each one. Try to find feats that complement your character and fit into your playstyle. Everyone gets to choose at least one feat in addition to the one given in your class's starting pack. You gain additional feats by leveling up. Starting with level 3, every third level allows you to choose a new feat. For languages, all player characters at least know how to speak common, in addition to any race speaking its own language. You are also allowed one language per point of intelligence bonus, bonus being your modifier. Sadly, Bodan has an intelligence modifier of negative 3, so he only gets his base racial languages. Not to mention he's illiterate, which means I need to spend skill points to teach my half orcs to read. The skill synergies on the bottom are self-explanatory. Just remember they only apply once. This next page is much simpler than the others. 
The experience box gives you plenty of space for addition. To know how much experience you need to level, add 1000 times your level to the goal you just reached. So for level 1, you need 0 experience. 1000 times 1 plus 0 is 1000. So I need 1000 experience to reach level 2. Once I reach level 2, it'll be 1000 times 2 plus 1000, and so on. I wrote all over the possessions line because there isn't anything to say besides this is where you list your things. Your class has a starting pack that has a list of items you can have, and you can store them anywhere. And like I said before, don't worry about weight if you're just starting to play. On the bottom are magic items and money. Magic items are any gear that affects your stats when worn. Write their name and stats here, and add their effects to the miscellaneous modifier slots. As for money, your starting goal depends on your class, as listed in your starting kit. Keep in mind the conversions are 10 copper for a silver, and 10 silver for a gold. This last page looks more daunting than it is. All these sections are for the different classes' unique abilities. They are all explained in the book under the classes that use them, but can still be hard to understand, so I'll be making a video to go more in depth with them. As for now, I've hopefully given you enough information to start your own character. There's still a ton left to learn, but don't let that stop you from playing. Hitting obstacles or getting stuck is always the first clue as to what you need to look up next. As for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and everything made sense to you. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.